Hi, and welcome to Seek Sustainable Japan podcast. JJ Walsh here in Hiroshima. And in this episode, this is a special bonus episode, an article I wrote about the 2024 Minka Summit, a celebration of rural Japan life and reuse of old houses. So this year was the third annual Minka Summit, and we went to the beautiful Hanase village in rural Kyoto for the third time. Uh, third time, three years, so the second year uh, they did it in Aichi, so a different area. But they went back to this charming Hanase village uh, for this three-day event again this year. Uh, old houses in Japan, built in traditional style, with beams fitted together beautifully, are often called minka. So that's why the Minka Summit. And usually, if a house is over a hundred years old, it's then called a kominka, which would mean old house. Uh, so both kominka and minka are used uh, to describe old traditional houses. Now, unfortunately, despite many of these houses being perfectly usable and beautiful and charming, uh, with a little stabilization work, renovation, and a bit of TLC to make it comfortable and to bring it into modern relevance, adding insulation, insulated windows, uh, better lighting, modern toilets, a nice bath, that kind of thing. Uh, hundreds and thousands are unfortunately destroyed every year, uh, kind of without a thought. For the last 50 years, it's kind of been a trend to modernize and instead use imported lumber, uh, prefab homes, and the traditions and culture, but also the connected artisans and the craftsmanship is also being lost because these old homes are being lost. Uh, the Noto Peninsula disaster this year on January 1st really highlighted the need to upkeep old houses and get them checked every five to 10 years for damage repairs and earthquake stability as 90% of fatalities unfortunately were due to old houses collapsing on the residents. Now residents of the affected Noto Peninsula area who I had the chance to interview on my talk show, Burn and Mitsue, uh, were talking about how they chose to stay after the quake despite the hardships of still being without water access. Unfortunately, we didn't see them at the Minka Summit this year, um, but a lot of people uh, were sending good uh, feelings of support uh, out to them and anybody who is uh, working through issues in the Noto Peninsula right now, we wish them all the best. Now, an old home in good repair, an old house, an old Minka, can be as resilient in a storm or earthquake as a new house as Ayumi and Uberto talked about uh, when I interviewed them on the show. Uh, they also joined a panel at this year's Minka Summit of speakers talking about the earthquake and issues in the Noto Peninsula at this year's event. And Ayumi had written a great article on Medium about earthquake safety and old homes uh, on her wonderful blog. If you search Medium, you'll find Japan Life again. I'll also put the link below. And that's how I found out about her uh, research into how to renovate an old house to make it more earthquake safe. And then we were able to talk about it on my show. And then uh, because I introduced Uberto and Ayumi on the show, then Lauren, one of the organizers of Minka Summit, uh, got in touch and said she's doing a panel on earthquake resilience of old houses. And they were able to go to the Minka Summit on her invitation and join the panel. So that was lovely to hear that that happens when I interview interesting people. I love these connections. Uh, there were interesting presentations, workshops, and visits to the Thunning Stat Thatch Straw Roof Houses and Village of Miyama, which is about an hour's drive away. And they have a collection of interesting thatch roof projects um, and houses that people are actually living in there. Uh, so it's a, still an active community. 
And it's interesting to see how even people living modern lives can really appreciate and enjoy living in these traditional thatch houses. We also had the chance as part of the Minka Summit to go over the mountain to the next village and visit the French design team to M26 uh, and their beautiful uh, thatched roof project. Now they had uh, learned how to do thatch. They went and harvested the straw. They built it together alongside the artisan. And they said uh, it was really interesting. Uh, the artisan who was teaching them was saying it usually takes a lot longer. They were able to do it in about two months uh, with them and the artisan and some volunteers. And it was interesting talking to Melanie. Uh, I'll put the link below to a bit of the interview that I had with her. Um, but she was saying they changed, they decided to change from the hard roof tile, the traditional tile, to bring it back to the thatch roof. And uh, some of the th unexpected charms of it were that it really, it uh, collects all of the humidity. So it's actually much cooler inside. And um, she said, when you're inside and it's raining, the sound of it is really beautiful and subtle. And uh, it's been a very wonderful experience having go back to Thatch, not only for the beauty, but for the the actual atmosphere and the living aesthetics of living in a thatch roof house. So that was nice to hear. Now this year, uh, Asby Brown was the keynote speaker at the Minka Summit. He's been uh, one of the Minka masters featured over the last three years at the summit. And this year he gave a fantastic keynote speech about falling in love with traditional temple architecture when he first came to Japan as a grad student and some of the lessons and uh, insights that he has learned over his many years, passionate about all kinds of architecture and design in Japan. Now, Asby has been on my show, Seek Sustainable Japan, many times, sharing his insight on a variety of topics from traditional to modern Japanese buildings, which he has specialized in over many years. Uh, he's also joined the show talking about um, the radiation testing group um, that he has been a part of for many years, uh, which started after Fukushima. So he's really knowledgeable about such a wide range of uh, important topics here in Japan. It was also impressive at the Minka Summit to see him so engaged with other people at the summit, listening to most of the presentations, attending the tours, workshops, and field trips as well. Uh, in the final day's presentation along t alongside another Minka master, Takeshita san who was the keynote last year, and uh, Alex Kerr, one of the Minka masters, was uh, trying to connect through from his home in Thailand. Unfortunately, they weren't able to connect, but we still felt the insights and the connection and the support from Alex Kerr, who's one of the most important um, advocates of traditional houses and renovating and reform and using traditional houses in business and as an asset for tourism. So um, he was the keynote in the first year. Uh, so Alex Kerr was a uh, keynote the first year, Takesh Desan in the second year, and now Asby Brown uh, this year, and they're all in the Minka Master uh, panel at the end on the final day. And we're all wondering who is going to be the keynote, who is going to join the Minka Master Group for next year. Uh, we're really looking forward to that. Uh, so with Takesh Dasan this year, Asby Brown, uh, both of them shared their hope, but also some of their disappointment with many of the lost treasures and lost culture and traditions of losing these old houses and culture in Japan as so many are being destroyed. But a bit of hope as well. Um, they also say they feel so hopeful when they come to the Minka Summit and they see so much enthusiasm and they uh, have a better feeling about a brighter future uh, with more of these houses preserved and reused. 
Uh, the Minka Mall was and always is an interesting part of the Minka Summit, a collection of businesses and artisans and food and workshops. Um, there are always great vendors in the Minka Mall selling naturally dyed products featuring lo local photographers. And uh, this year, Wendy was even selling traditional tools, uh, giant saws. I've never seen tools like this before. Um, a lot of people like Wendy who take over old houses, um, they find these treasures in the old houses. So it's nice uh, she was able to refurbish them and then sell them on to people that actually want to use them. That was great to see. Uh, they also sold a delicious local healthy lunch, uh, which was served on a wooden cutting board. Uh, so that it was a zero waste lunch. There was no plastics or a single use in that. And I asked for mine without uh, fish and no problem to have that. So mine was a vegetarian version. Um, but they also had a guy selling beautiful uh, Mexican food, uh, which was a nice change. And uh, other people selling things like wood stoves, um, other organizations which help people renovate their houses or give advice. So uh, the Minka Mall is always a an interesting place to go and wander and get some ideas and information. Also authors like Asby Brown, uh, you can get them to sign their books and uh, talk to them one-to-one -one as well. Uh, there were also interesting workshops in the Minka Mall. One was about uh, making thatch roofing just outside and one was by uh, Emily Kaneko Reynolds and she uh, gave a plastering workshop Unfortunately, it was at the same time that I was monitor, uh, moderator for a panel, so I wasn't able to go and watch, um, but I heard good things from other people, and Emily has joined my talk show talking about her passion for natural plastering in Japan, and she's got a real depth of knowledge on the subject, which was so fun to talk to her. And then when I saw her at the Minka Mall, uh, she said, oh my gosh, you lit the fire under me and I've got my second book published. So I was so happy uh, to have been able to inspire and, and motivate her to get her second book out. So we were able to uh, get her to sign two of the books uh, about natural plastering at the Minka Mall this year. Um, now, I had the chance uh, to talk with Milosav Bachuda on my show recently after the Minka Summit and he was one of the presenters at the summit this year and uh, also the last two years I believe and he's a knowledgeable architect who's based in Shizuoka, Japan, an area where you can usually see Mount Fuji and uh, was one of the presenters this year and gave a summary of his talk on the talk show uh, a week after the event this year. Um, so I'll put the link there below. Now, Mito is involved with so many stunning guest house and restaurant projects, as well as doing consulting with the city of Shizuoka on more sustainable urban design and urban planning. So really exciting stuff. He's going to join my talk show again in May this month and uh, give us more insights, more about the sustainable urban planning. So I'm excited to hear more about that. Also, we didn't have time. We were talking so much about his projects. We didn't have time for his wrap up of the Minka Summit. So hopefully he'll have a few minutes to give a wrap up of his impressions of the Minka Summit on the talk on May 25th. So I hope you can join us then. Now, Brett Rasmussen is, uh, probably gets the prize for coming the farthest to the Minka Summit this year as he traveled on local roads in his small K truck over three days, coming from his remote island of Ojika in Nagasaki to join two panel discussion, discussions this year, uh, both of which I was moderating. One was about heritage and how to find and renovate a Minka in the other. Now, Brett has such great insights on how to make use of discarded materials, use renewable energy, use natural dyes such as uh, fermented persimmons, as well as uh, he talks about how to look for uh, good quality minka, but also how to get 
craftspeople and experts involved in the process. So not just using YouTube and doing everything uh, makeshift and learning as you go, but there is a lot of great knowledge if you can collaborate and hire local craftspeople and local experts, uh, it makes a real difference. So that was some great advice from him. Uh, David Caprara, who is a journalist and documentary filmmaker who has based himself in rural Nara ever since he uh, was based there as a jet teacher. Uh, many of us first came to Japan introduced on jet. And uh, on the Seek Sustainable Japan talk show, before the summit, he was sharing insights about his film projects and renovation of his home and some of the beautiful treasures, photographs and things which he was preserving, uh, which he found in his house. And he talked to the owners and they were happy for him to use it any way he could because they couldn't see how they would ever use it. They didn't have kids, so that was really powerful. Um, on the panel about how to find and renovate an older home, he also had some great uh, insights and, and really gave the advice to uh, really get to know your area and just keep looking until you find a house that for some reason just ticks all your boxes. So he was actually looking for a house to buy for about 10 years and then finally found the place that just seemed to fit him. Uh, renovation projects, traditional design, Akia abandoned houses, and how to fix up and find old houses in Japan is one of the most popular topics and sub-series in my channel, Seek Sustainable Japan. Uh, if you're interested in this topic, you can learn a lot from binging the playlist <laughs> of over a hundred interviews and visits related to the topic of uh, how to reuse and renovate old houses and living in rural Japan. Uh, I'd encourage you to try to make it to the Minka Summit 2025 in April next year to join us and find out more about how to enjoy living in a traditional house, being part of a rural community, uh, so many of the people I meet each year who are interested in the topic of renovating and restoring are fascinating as well as being great fun to hang out with. Um, I had the chance this year to see once again uh, Lawrence who runs a very popular YouTube channel about renovating his old house and connecting with other people who've renovated houses. Uh, Coco Lenche, Lencho and I'll, I'll put his link below and it was great fun to see him and his his friends uh, coming all the way from Yamaguchi and his friends coming from Nagasaki all the way up to join the Minka Summit this year so that was great to meet them and have a chance to chat with them other people coming from our area who are enthusiastic about uh, preserving and reusing these old houses and living in rural Japan a big thanks once again to the Kominka Japan team, Stuart Galbraith IV, Andrea Carlson, Laura Scharf, uh, Vince Ning, uh, Wendy Bigler, Derek Cameron Bliss, and so many other staff and volunteers who really made the Minka Summit event a great success once again this year. Big thanks um, for all of your hard work. And thank you for listening. And uh, if you liked this uh, podcast, please uh, share it with a friend, uh, write a comment. You can find me on social media at JJ Walsh on Twitter. Yes, still on Twitter. Okay, it's called X. Yeah, I'm still there. Uh, Inbound Ambassador on Facebook and Instagram. I'm also on LinkedIn. Uh, I'll put the link tree for all my links below. Have a great day, everyone.